What if I told you that we could derive one of the most famous formulas for pi using a completely new number system? A system where logarithms of negative numbers are naturally defined and where the traditional concept of imaginary numbers is no longer needed. Welcome to the virtual number system. Today, we'll use this system to uncover the Leibniz formula for pi in a way you've never seen before. By redefining exponentials and logarithms, we will naturally arrive at a beautiful infinite series for pi. So let's dive in. We begin with a well-known mathematical series, the Taylor series expansion for the natural logarithm of one plus V. It's given as follows. The natural logarithm of one plus V equals V minus V squared over two plus V cubed over three minus V to the fourth over four and so on. This series plays a crucial role in mathematical analysis. But now let's introduce something new. Instead of choosing an arbitrary value for v, we will set v equal to j divided by pi. Here, j is the virtual unit in the virtual number system, where j equals the natural logarithm of negative 1. This substitution transforms the series into a new form, which we will now explore step by step. Now that we've set v equal to j over pi, let's evaluate each term in the series under this transformation. The first term is simply v, which is j over pi. The second term is negative one-half times v squared. Substituting v, this becomes negative one-half times j over pi squared. Since we know that j squared equals negative pi squared, we can simplify this. First, j over pi squared equals negative pi squared divided by pi squared, which simplifies to negative one. Then negative one-half times negative one equals positive one-half. So the second term simplifies to one-half. The third term is one-third times v cubed. Substituting v, this becomes one-third times j over pi cubed. Since j cubed equals negative pi squared times j, we substitute this in. First, j over pi cubed equals negative pi squared times j divided by pi cubed. This simplifies to negative j over pi. Then one-third times negative j over pi equals negative j over three pi. So the third term simplifies to negative j over three pi. The fourth term is negative one-fourth times v to the fourth. Substituting v, this becomes negative one-fourth times j over pi to the fourth. Since j to the fourth equals pi to the fourth, we compute j over pi to the fourth as pi to the fourth divided by pi to the fourth, which equals one. Then negative one-fourth times one equals negative one-fourth. So the fourth term simplifies to negative one-fourth. Now that we've expanded our series, let's separate it into real and virtual components. The natural logarithm of one plus v equals j over pi plus one half minus j over three pi minus one fourth, and so on. This can be rewritten as the sum of one half minus one fourth plus one sixth minus one eighth and so on, plus j times the sum of one over pi minus one over three pi plus one over five pi minus one over seven pi and so on. This separation will allow us to compare it with another approach using the virtual log formula. In the virtual number system, the logarithm of a number v, which equals a plus b times j, follows a specific formula. Instead of using traditional complex logarithms, we define it as the natural logarithm of v equals the natural logarithm of the magnitude of v plus j times the argument of v divided by pi. The magnitude of v equals the square root of 1 squared plus 1 over pi squared times pi squared. Since 1 over pi squared times pi squared equals 1, this simplifies to the square root of 2. Next, let's compute the argument of v. The argument of v equals the inverse tangent of one over pi times pi divided by one, which simplifies to the inverse tangent of one. The inverse tangent of one equals pi over four. Now applying the virtual log formula, the natural logarithm of one plus v equals the natural logarithm of the square root of two plus j times pi over four divided by pi. This simplifies to one halves the natural logarithm of two plus j over four. Now, we'll compare this with the series expansion we derived earlier to extract the formula for pi. From our earlier derivation, we have the sum of one half minus one fourth plus one sixth minus one eighth and so on, plus j times the sum of one over pi minus one over three pi plus one over five pi minus one over seven pi, and so on. And from the virtual log formula, we have one half times the natural logarithm of two plus j over four. Equating the virtual components, we obtain one over pi minus one over three pi plus one over five pi minus one over seven pi and so on equals one fourth. Multiplying both sides by pi, we get the famous Leibniz series for pi. Pi equals four times the sum of one minus one third plus one fifth minus one seventh and so on. 
And there it is, the famous Leibniz formula for pi derived using the virtual number system. This approach gives us a fresh perspective on infinite series and the beauty of mathematics. If you found this fascinating, check out my other videos on the virtual number system, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more mind-blowing math content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.